Would you like to make better use of data collected by your country's public institutions? Have you wondered how to reduce your reliance on surveys and censuses for the production of official statistics? And have you, in that connection, maybe come across the Nordic countries? Yes, all of them roughly up there. We have put together a video with a few of the Nordics explaining how they work. Enjoy! Every country collects information on their population. In most countries, this is done through surveys and censuses. Do you know how long it takes and how much it costs to carry out a traditional population census? Depending on the size of the country, it can take far more than one year from start of preparation to completion of the census. It usually costs around one whole year's budget of the statistical office and complicated logistics. No matter where, it's a very time and resource consuming task and therefore only carried out every 10 years or less often when there are funding problems. The story is a different one up in the north. We will now hear from Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden a little more about what they do. In Statistics Norway, around 90% of all our statistics are based on data from different administrative sources. We only use surveys to a limited degree to supplement information that we cannot find in the registers. We have worked with the administrative data for a long time in Sweden, several decades. And we go more and more uh, towards uh, using more administ administrative data. Uh, I remember when we, 2011, established a real estate register uh, that enables us to uh, the tax authority to uh, uh, do the population registration at a real estate level. In that way, we can use household uh, definitions on registers. And this is only possible because of the public institutions and their data. The Norwegian Tax Authority explains more. Norway has got a central national population registry established in 1964 and based on the census in 1960. The registry has become more and more important and the registry is a central part of our national infrastructure. The National Population Registry forms the basis for the tax register, population statistics and the electoral roll. And you need a national identity number to take care of basic needs in the society. The national identity numbers are issued to identify a person in the Norwegian society. All services in both private and public sector and in all digital procedures. And how are the registers organized? The information from administrative sources is organized in three core registers. The population register containing information on all residents with unique identifiers the housing and dwelling register containing information on all dwellings, also with unique identifiers. And lastly, the business register containing information on all businesses in the country with unique business IDs. In those basic registers, administrative registers, all the units had a unique identification throughout their lifetime. And we had the opportunity to link the units together via uh, also via their physical location, via their addresses. And then gradually over time, we have gained access not only to the basic registers, but also to an abundance of other public sector registers where we have information for the whole population on a wide range of uh, phenomena on which we base our statistics. Let's look at the example of Lisa to see how it works in practice. Lisa could come from any of the Nordic countries as they are organized in very similar ways, even though there are also some small differences between their systems. Lisa is born in a hospital in one of the Nordics. A few minutes after her birth, she receives a unique personal number from the Central Population Register, also connecting her to her mother and father in the register. Lisa's ID will be a key to most of her interactions with the government and other actors throughout her life, as we will see in this story. After a few weeks, Lisa receives her first vaccinations. The information is saved securely in a health register, in some of the Nordics also linked to her personal ID. To ensure confidentiality of health information, 
The regulation on storing and sharing these data is particularly strict. When Lisa is five or six, she and her parents receive notification of school enrollment. The system automatically links her unique ID, age and place of living to the school she administratively belongs to. When Lisa finishes high school, she moves to a new city and starts at university. The move is registered in the Housing and Dwelling Register and her higher education in the Education Register, both with her unique personal ID. While studying, Lisa meets Lars. They fall in love and after some years decide to move in together and get married. Their personal ID numbers are now linked and they are also registered at the same address. A few years later, Lisa and Lars move into a house with their two children, Per and Nilla. The family's move is registered in the Housing and Dwelling Register. The personal ID numbers of Per and Nilla, which they also received at birth, are connected to those of their parents and their joint address. After having worked as an employee for many years, Lisa decides to open her own company and become the employer. Her company is given a unique business ID when initially registered. She and the employees are linked to the company through their personal IDs or their employee IDs, depending on which country they live in. The company is linked to the housing and dwelling register, as well as the taxation register, with related information. After many years of working, Lisa and Lars retire. They are listed with their personal IDs and benefit entitlements in the pension register, and will hopefully still enjoy many years together. The unique ID of a person, a company and an address play a key role in this story. With a unique personal ID and safe linking between re different registers, Lisa and other citizens do not have to engage much with the government because information is automatically picked up and reused. The three core registers mentioned earlier in this video are key to bringing different aspects of life together and other registers linked to them such as the health, education, environment, tax and employment registers. So, to summarize, information is organized and saved in registers. Institutions share data. The administrative data sources are then reused by other institutions, but also for statistics production by the National Statistical Office. A census can be carried out every day at much lower cost and effort. But there's more to it, as we will hear in a moment. According to our Statistics Act, we should use data that already exist in our society, always when it is possible. So, the use of the registers has a very strong legal basis. The cooperation is very close between register authorities and Statistics Finland. It means regular meetings and contacts with the most important ministries and other authorities, both in the general director level and also in the expert level. Also, tasks and responsibilities are defined into standardized agreements between Statistics Finland and data providers. Then, of course, this uh, system involves a lot of collaboration with the data providers. And so they become our partners in the whole production process. Um, we are in a fortunate situation that when the previous law on Statistics Denmark was uh, enacted in 1966. Actually, the, the members of parliament were quite visionary in granting Statistics Denmark access to data from public registers. And not only that, but also it obliged other public authorities to coordinate with Statistics Denmark if they, if and when they want to put in place or change existing registers. We also in Sweden have a, a disseminated uh, um, responsibility for official statistics. So it's very common that the different uh, institu institutions have a responsibility for official statistics. So therefore they have a, some, some sort of knowledge of the use of the data. So we use that also when we discuss uh, with the different authorities which kind of information they have. Ensuring the quality of the administrative data is a continuous task that is shared between all institutions involved. All the Nordics have had many years to work with the administrative data owners on quality assessment and assurance. However, NSO and data owners still today continue working on it through feedback mechanisms and agreements on the use of common standards and definitions. 
It all becomes easier when collaboration and trust increase. The workers were well invested as a functioning system provides high quality statistics with comparatively low effort. Over the years, we have also improved our cooperation with the register owners. And we have set up a system for giving feedback on the quality of the data that we receive from them. For instance, when uh, a very concrete example of this was when the central administrative business register in Denmark was created. Statistics Denmark was involved together with the business authority and the tax administration how to define the the units, the types of units that should be in the business register and the definitions of those. And then also the definition of the different um, uh, variables. For instance, it was decided on the um, recommendation from Statistics Denmark to use the local kind of activity unit as the definition of the for the establishments. And also the activity codes was based on the statistical classification. And there are other examples there how we were able to influence uh, an administrative register so that it would be created in a way where the information would be directly reusable for statistical purposes. And how did it all come about? In all the Nordics back in the 1960s and 70s, there were agreements at highest level to engage in close cooperation and sharing of information, as well as legal changes that allowed for and obliged government institutions to the sharing of data and the development of an infrastructure that enabled data sharing and linking with the highest concern for confidentiality in the public sector. A key element of building a system like this is trust in government and also in fellow citizens. Next to trust, the very close cooperation between the different institutions is essential. Also, everyone is part of the system from the day they are born or immigrated with benefits and participation. A little more about the benefits of this system. The benefits. Of course, the lower costs, lower response burden, no non-response. We have a total populations Oh, we have very large data content in those registers. It is possible to produce statistics on small populations and also small areas. We can produce uh, statistics every year, etc. Just to mention some of the benefits. Now, the big advantage of having the access to the administrative registers is that we can have high quality information for the whole of the population and we can have it. Uh, at very low cost, not only to us, but especially for the enterprises, so that information that has already been collected by one public administration can be shared with us in a safe, uh, secure manner. And then the enterprises, they don't have to report it again to us, to what they have already reported to another public entity. Are there challenges with this kind of system? It is a great responsibility for the statistical office to administer the data that we get from the different administrative sources. We have to abide with data protection laws and we have to ensure that confidentiality is secured. There's of course challenges. Um, the responsibility for the data is some, some other authority or institution. So you are some sort in the hands of the other, uh, if they do some changes in the information they have, there's a big ch uh, challenge. But if you, uh, so there, uh, once again, you have to work closely with the other authorities to um, get notice of coming changes. But you also uh, um, have the ch a challenge of the more information in the society, not, not just uh, not the ordinary sources only, but also new information. How do you collect that? That's a big challenge, I think. Some tips if a country wants to build a similar system? Rome was not built in a day, nor a register-based statistical system. In Finland, we started to build up register-based statistics in 1970s. The use of the registers increased step by step, year by year. In 1990, we conducted census totally based on registers. It took 20 years planning and developing this project. 
and it still continues. New information, new registers, new customer needs. This is a continuous project. So be patient, be creative and innovative, be curious, be cooperative, learn from others and don't give up. Here are some of the main steps when you want to build a register-based system like the ones we have just heard about. Start by creating awareness among state institutions and government about the benefits, building trust in the process. Then review the legal framework and if necessary, start an amendment process. Also consider bilateral agreements like MOUs with data owners that detail data exchange. There are international recommendations you can use. Next, map what data are there and assess the quality of them and see how to improve them if they don't meet quality standards needed for statistics. Then investigate if there already are unique identifiers in your country and how they could be used for statistics. Lastly, there's the NSO and state IT infrastructure. Check if it can handle the amount of data transfer in a secure and confidential manner. Also here, there's great international best practice to seek inspiration from. We hope you have enjoyed this short video. It is of course only a snapshot from one part of the world. A lot of great work is to be found in other parts, with videos coming up. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about administrative data, we invite you to visit the inventory of resources of the Collaborative on Administrative Data.